designed this thing for a few, with a few things in mind. First and foremost, had to be super easy to get up on, and we started with the widest ski first, and then narrowed it for the katana. So everything that's in this thing for a few is in the katana. It's only slightly narrower. And what you're feeling, Mike, when when it's an easy deep water start, is this extra bit of width back here under your back foot. So what this width does is. As the ski starts to come up out of the water, the width of the ski is just going to push right here. Whereas if this ski was tapered, as you would taper a traditional slalom ski, then it's going to take a little bit more for you to get pulled up on the water. Whereas this is actually like someone's holding the bottom of the ski and pushing you up on top of the water. So that's that's what this part is responsible for. And also, if you look at the side cut, we've got a wide spot here, we've got a wide spot here, and then we've got a slight little bit of inside radius here. And what that does is, and what you've also felt on the water that you commented on is how easy this ski is to stand on. You've got this part that stops the nose from going in too far. You've got this part that stops the tip from rocking up on you too much, which when the tip rocks up, it's hard to turn, hard to get any acceleration, hard to go through the wakes. You start bouncing all over the place. So we, we, we designed this to really self-center you. This thing puts you, if you lean back, this part's gonna put you in the middle. If you lean forward, this part's gonna put you in the middle. And so this section that you see with this inside radius is where the ski turns. And so by putting this inside radius, as the ski starts to roll on edge, it allows the ski to pull and turn like that. So this is what's responsible for those automatic turns you're feeling. And so going along with being easy to get up on and self-centering, we wanted it to be able to just show you how to turn. Now if we flip it over, it's hard to see with the sun, um, but there's two grooves running down here because we obviously wanted it to be stable and uh -huh. we wanted it that once it started to turn, that it just kept turning and these kind of anchor it in and hold it across the course. And the last little gem that we built into this thing that you can't see, but when you're in your shop and you're handing it to people, is we put a flat spot right down the center of the concave. So what that does, it not only aids a little bit in lift, but it takes the drag away. And when I was testing this ski in the, in the early design phases, I was running the course 17, 18 miles an hour, no problem on it, not sinking, not straining, not pushing, not wheeling, just cruising on it. Um, we wanted to make this thing drag free, so we actually did a little bit of testing against some of the other models in this range from the other companies with a scale on the rope. And we kept refining the rocker, refining the tail width, refining this until we got the least amount of drag. So if you put um, a fish scale on the rope, you will find that this one has the least amount of drag there is. So, you know, we really did our homework on this ski and that's why you started out by saying, don't let the shape of it fool you. In fact, I had a gentleman here last week who was skiing on a high-end slalom ski, 71 years old, barely running the course, and it took me two days to convince him to try it, and he fell in love with it. So even pretty accomplished slalom skiers will have a blast on this ski. There's a ski that's gonna get you up easy, less drag, rolling on the edge effortlessly. Like you said, his own backed off and this, oh geez, this thing turns beautifully. Yeah. That's a great ski. Yeah. The Katana, the Butter Knife from Radar. Matt, thanks. Thanks, great Mike. Great hanging out with you as always.